She belonged to I don't know how many different clubs. She was a leading light of local so-called black society. I saw and met a hundred black people there whose big city talk and ways left my mouth hanging open. I couldn't have feigned indifference if I had tried to. People talked casually about Chicago, Detroit, New York. I didn't know the world contained as many Negroes as I saw thronging downtown Roxbury at night, especially on Saturdays. Neon lights, nightclubs, pool halls, bars, the cars they drove. Restaurants made the streets smell rich, greasy, down-home black cooking. <laughs> Jukeboxes blared Erskine Hawkins, Duke Ellington, Cootie Williams, dozens of others. If somebody had told me then that someday I'd know them all personally, I'd have found it hard to believe. The biggest bands like these played at the Roseland State Ballroom on Boston's Massachusetts Avenue. One night for Negroes, the next night for whites. I saw for the first time occasional black and white couples strolling around arm in arm. And on Sundays when Ella, Mary, or somebody took me to church, I saw churches for black people such as I had never seen. They were many times finer than the white church I had attended back in Mason, Michigan. There, the white people just sat and worshiped with words. But the Boston Negroes, like all other Negroes I had ever seen at church, threw their souls and bodies wholly into worship. Two or three times, I wrote letters to Wilfred intended for everybody back in Lansing. I said I'd try to describe it when I got back, but I found I couldn't. My restlessness with Mason, and for the first time in my life, a restlessness with being around white people, began as soon as I got back home and entered eighth grade. I continued to think constantly about all that I had seen in Boston and about the way I had felt there. I know now that it was the sense of being a real part of a mass of my own kind for the first time. The white people, classmates, the swirlings, the people at the restaurant where I worked noticed the change. They said, you're acting so strange. You don't seem like yourself, Malcolm. What's the matter? <laughs> I kept close to the top of the class, though. The topmost scholastic standard.